You know, really, the profession kind of chose me. I was, uh, I've been into media and broadcasting since I was a little kid. My, one of my uh, uh, cousins and I would like broadcast Royals games when they were on TV. Uh, we'd call each other up on the telephone and we would do the play-by-play -play for the game while we were watching it. And we just kind of mimicked what we had heard on radio uh, listening to ball games growing up. And so we were you know, five, six, seven years old. That just would kill time for us. Uh, and um, I just, it kind of stuck with me to, to stay into, into sports, stay into media. And it just kind of evolved from uh, doing play by play to doing sports reporting to doing production and now sports production. And then ultimately I teach it. I've always wanted to do it, even when I was a, a young man. I thought I wanted to do play-by-play, -play. and so when I was a uh, elementary school, even junior high, I would listen to the radio, watch television, and I would watch the games, but I also would listen to the announcers, and I thought, man, I want to do that. So I would go out in the backyard, and I would have baseball games, or I would broadcast imaginary football games. So I've been doing this ever since I was... Uh, a young, really since I was a boy, and that's really all I've ever wanted to do. Um, I always like to talk to people, communicate, and I don't know, like uh, know different stories, different backgrounds. And I think um, video, which is uh, my, my field now, inside of journalism and everything, is um, one of the, the the kind of ways you can show people about people, about their cultures and everything. So I found that very interesting when I was young. And I always loved movies, um, programs, entertainment and everything. So I don't know, I kind of went that towards that, that, that way, mm -hmm. like easily. So yeah, uh, video, film, cinema, sports, broadcasting, everything related to that. It's well, what I love to do. Uh, when I graduated and went to Brazil, uh, I knew that my experience uh, on hands-on learning here in Moval made a difference for, for them to choose me to work for the TV channel we have in Brazil. So I know that I learned a lot and experience um, having all the experiences that I had here, it was important. And when I when they called me to come back, I, I couldn't say no. It's I I didn't even think twice. I was like, let's do it. All right. If it's true but not entirely true, it's not true. So let's get to where it is irrefutably true. It's because if, if someone comes back and says, well, it's not entirely true, then you at least did credibility issues. What's the hardest thing for beginning journalists to establish? Credibility. Credibility. I think in, in terms of, of the journalism of it, I, I still hold on to the old ideal of you seek the truth and report the truth. Um, you know, there, there's not so much of that anymore as there, there used to be, but uh, I still am a firm believer in the old Edward R. Murrow, Walter Cronkite, you're down the center and you're a journalist with a capital J and your job is to find uh, the truth, get confirmation of the truth before you report the truth and then you, you go with it. Um, you know, there, there's still, I think, a lot of value in information. I think as we continue to see so much misinformation spread on social media, um, I think that the people who can provide truth and, and can, provide it, can, can provide it in a manner that's uh, balanced and fair and consistent uh, and above all accurate, um, you build up some trust and we can hopefully fight some of the misinformation that's out there. There are different ways uh, that we, like different goals. Uh, we can inform, we can show, we can make people see through their eyes or read about it. So journalism, broadcasting, they work for, towards information. That's what I believe the goal of my career is, our career.
I'm really close with one of my brothers, whose name is Alejandro, and I think it was the, like the person who made me choose this major because um, before I used to create like a lot of content, like making videos or recording like some kind of stuff, like for radio. Like I was always like interacting with that, this kind of things. And Alejandro was the one like helped me doing it and make me like, uh, like this thing. Where well, the challenges are, of course, doing things that you never thought you would do. You know, um, here you have to be like, interviewing people, going out um, to look for stories, you know. You need to face challenges as um, deadlines, of course. And the pressure of like, maybe sometimes your professor uh, asking for what you have to do. Of course, those are your assignments, so you, you need to get them done. But it is like all your assignments in this major, they have to be like uh, about production, you know. So it's not like you sit uh, in, on your table and then you're gonna get everything done, but you have to go outside, look for stories, maybe interview some people, record some footage. So it's like, it's like a lot of a lot of work to get like a simple assignment done. Good afternoon. It's currently 4:49 here in Marshall, Missouri. You just listen to Miracle Mind by Cold War Kids. Remember, you're listening to 91.7 MB, your station for alternative rock. And I am Santiago Salazar. Coming up next is Giving Up by Lakin Park. 91.7 MB, So tell me, how is a normal day in the life of a mass communication student? Um, I want a nap every day. <laughs> I don't get a nap every day. Um, it's very busy, very, very busy. I feel like um, every hour is dedicated to something. Rather it's uh, in class, having to do with the class, or catching up with the rest of the classes that you put off because you've had to do mass comm stuff. So um, every day of a mass comm student is tough, it's long. Early mornings, late nights, um, constantly stressing yourself because some of fact is more of a you want to get the story correct but you want to be as creative as, as you can be with that but at the same time you don't want to step on any toes or create any um, uh, tension against yourself and that's probably for a lot of people that's the hardest part figuring out something that you actually want to do and that you feel like you would invest your time into and do well on um, I find that that's important too. If you, you know, if you don't have any interest in it, then why am I talking about it? You know, and so um, finding something that you actually have an interest in that you actually want to talk about, then finding the people that you that will be good people on camera to talk about. Then, then you got to make sure they're actually answering your questions to the best of you know to get the story that you actually want or story any story at all. And if you don't get that person, then you gotta find somebody else that's not gonna give you just mm hmm or mm hmm answers. And you just gotta keep looking for those. Then you gotta put all that together. Then you gotta find the B roll to go on top of that so you're not just watching this person talk all day. Then you gotta, you know, you gotta go through all this stuff. Then you gotta edit the package and make sure it's smooth and make sure it makes sense on how you told the story. And then you wanna make sure you told the story in a time to where people are, can pay attention and not get sidetracked. I can tell if my, my story's too long if I'm watching it and I start thinking of other stuff while I'm watching it and then I'm like, oh man, I missed that and I'm like, okay, maybe I need to cut this story short a little bit because I don't have the time to spend for it and I made the thing, so what makes me think that somebody else is? You know, we have, like, I was an English major before, a mass comm major and the way we, like, English, you know what I'm saying, you have to do the grammar and all that stuff, but then I changed to mass comm, I could scratch grammar out. I don't have to talk like, like I know complete English. I can talk how I speak, you know what I mean? I can, I can say certain things, I can, I can speak TV. And with mass comedy, it's just, I guess, it, it, it let me be artistic, basically. I would say it let me be artistic, because, you know I mean, I, I, I say I would have a little artistic touch sometimes, but when it comes to the camera, I think the camera really like, almost like I'm, it's not, almost like I'm not there. So, like when Chaz first put me, when Chaz first put me on one of the live streams, yeah, I was messing up, but I was happy as hell. I, mean, I don't know why. I don't know why I was happy to be just doing on camera because I always wanted to be a broadcast, broadcast type person, like a Stephen A. Smith type thing, you know. Um, 
And when Chaz told me, well, you know, you probably won't be good in front of the camera, but behind the camera might be your might be your ticket. I was like, well, okay, well, he said if you can work on shots. So go to classes and then whenever we have breaks, I try and get my script done or I try to do some editing or interview someone so that when it comes down to Sunday night when I finally get, or Sunday during the day when I finally get a full day of time where I can just sit and relax and look at all my work, it's not like, oh my gosh, I have six hours of, to do all of this or I need to get all of this done now. Like It's just like these are the final touches, um, these are my final edits and then try and make my script better and my video better from there. Um, then you have to worry about presenting it and then getting it ripped up by Maddie. Um, <laughs> then you have to take it and fix it and make it great. And, but that's just as a student. And in the real world, you don't have the chance to really go back and make it great. You, you get that one shot and then it's on the air and it's gone. So it's like, I appreciate this practice because you learn a lot more of what works, what doesn't work, how, when you need to do stuff, what you can put off, how, you know, this, <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> you know, here's the thing, students are students. And I remember uh, quite fondly my time as a student. And one of the things that's hard for students to grasp is um, time management. Um, you know, Students will think that they don't have any time and they have all the time in the world, generally. Um, you know, and that's, that's just part of that process. And honestly, time management and deadlines is kind of how media people live. Uh, there's a lot of that in journalism, but even in terms of commercial production or in terms of event production, there are deadlines you have to hit. And so uh, our, our world is ruled by a clock and um, how you're able to allocate time resources to the task getting done is probably the biggest challenge. It's one of the things that students uh, really don't kind of grasp until later in the game. Uh, the other challenge is um, that sometimes, you know, it's hard to convince 18 and 19 year olds that their job begins the first year in college. Uh, and what I mean by that is, you know, when one of the things, the first things I teach uh, students is to lose the idea that they are in fact a student. If they're going to report for me in terms of like KMVC News or even for the Delta or for uh, 91.7 The V, is to lose the idea that you're a student. You know, you're, you're going to build credibility in the sense that this is my job. My job is to do this for, it may be for the class, but it's still ultimately your responsibility to get the assignments done, to get the board shifts done, to get the news stories done, to broadcast the sporting events. It is part of your job and when you walk off of Greg Mitchell Field after graduation, you know, the piece of paper is going to be fantastic, but ultimately everyone's going to say, well, what can, what can you show me? What can you do? What I'm doing um, is creating a list of data points that the graphic will read um, for the game. And what happens is, is that each time this graphic gets called up, it gets populated uh, with the information from a database. So like right now I've got it set up that each of these is looking at a different spot in the database for information. So when I build the lines in for the rest of the graphic, that you can tell it, you know, the winner of Missouri Valley Mount Mercy plays the winner of Benedict and Mid Am, and the winner of Central Methodist and Grandview plays the winner of Baker and Culver Stockton. And then when I go through for next Tuesday and kind of rechart it, I'll eliminate some of the data points, but the rest I'll stay. Uh, and so uh, there's that way it's far less work. Uh, it's a lot of work now, but far less work in the future when we go to do this again. Um, there's a few new things okay. that I'll go through uh, in terms of how we, we call graphics, but you'll get it. Um, and I have a headset for you. Um, our headsets are different. Have you seen really? the new headsets? No. Oh, they're wireless. Really? Yeah. Whoa, that's fancy. It is fancy. <laughs> uh, camera people, uh, honestly, you can start uh, heading over. We'll get. I'll get my Jeep. Start taking. 
to all wheel this over. Need help with anything? Uh, start wheeling this stuff toward the, the tunnel so we can load back in my Jeep. Um, it's, let's see, they have their stuff. Don't forget to try to find Victor. It's everything that's over here on the table is going to go over. Getting mm -hmm. the truck. Tripods are important. We're going to stand on your shoulders for five hours. You said for five hours. No. Five hours. Five hours. Five hours. Five hours. <laughs> but for real. All right. Okay, look. All right, so cameras. Uh, we'll put. Uh, Camera one is going to be in the radio booth next to us. Mm -hmm. Camera two will be in stats. Okay. And you should be by yourself in stats. Well, with the exception of we'll put this business computer over there. Who's camera one? Uh, You're looking at me. I'm looking at either one of you. All right. It doesn't matter. Uh, I haven't done soccer before. You'll do game. Okay. I think one of the uh, overall goals for our live streams is to get through the entire show cleanly while mimicking a traditional TV broadcast as best as we can. When people watch sports on TV, if you're going to watch, and there's soccer up here now, but if you're going to watch you know, a soccer match or if you're watching a football game or if you're watching a basketball game, there's a certain expectation that, when you ha that people have as a viewer of what you're going to see. Our job is to get as close to that as possible, given the fact that everyone's students and I don't have, I don't have a broadcast truck at my fingertips. So, you know, how to make it look like it's the same thing. And uh, one of the things that we have done since the live stream uh, efforts have started in 2009 is to do better every year. And so, you know, whether it's the, in, you know, part of that is performance by the students, how do we shoot better? Um, you know, let's, let's get familiar with the sports before we go in and shoot them so that we understand, you know, what happens when the ball goes out of bounds in soccer. That someone's going to throw it back in right away, or there's going to be a corner kick or a goal kick. What happens on an out of bounds play or a touchdown or after football? So, I mean, you kind of are familiar with the sports so you can shoot them better. Uh, and that improves the product. We try to improve the quality of the product every year. We try to improve the graphic look of the product every year. We try to get as close to broadcast, knowing that we have a student crew every year, um, and try to improve upon our previous years. And I think um, we are the best in the Heart of America Athletic Conference. We are as close to TV as as there is in this conference. Um, and I've, you know, when other professors tell me, hey, our stuff's pretty good. I nod and I smile and I'm like, okay, yeah, thanks. But when other coaches or other administrators from different college, from the schools we're playing against, when other coaches and other administrators from the school that Valley is playing against come up and say that our stuff is really good, they like watching what we are producing in terms of uh, Viking Sports Network, you know, that I, I put a lot of, of stock into because the opposing schools 
don't have to say they like watching our stuff because hey you, you see what's going on the announcing is good the video is good the fact that we have replays is fantastic the stats feeds we've had and the running clock we've had are, are, are nice additions so all that adds up into hey real life environment so that's as close as we can get to uh, in terms of the students in terms of providing content i like doing live streams um i just gotta remember to wear comfortable shoes and always forget to wear comfortable shoes to more comfy ones because we stand like the entire time but i like it because i feel like i learned something different every single time every single time i feel like something i don't know something clicks for me or I don't know. <laughs> I just like last year. I do like it though. The more experience you get, the less pressure it is. But still, at the same time, you want to make sure you get all the shots. You know that you that you were supposed to get. Especially when you're tight, you want to make sure you get all the plays because you're pretty much replay. So if you miss it, it's kind of like then there's no replay. And um, I mean, replay is what I feel like makes us look really advanced. Thank you. You're welcome. And the wireless headsets too. <laughs> it's good because you we are live. So people are seeing us live. So you have to be on top of your game and be like, okay, I can't screw this because people is just gonna people are watching it and they're gonna know. And also because you get credit before like at the beginning of their live stream, they say your name, they're like, Oh, in camera one, Jimena Padilla in camera two, somebody else. So People know, okay, Jimena is camera one. So, you know, if you make a mistake, they will know. So, yeah, it's kind of difficult, but at the same time, it gives you a taste of what the real world is going to be. And it's also difficult, too, because there's some days that maybe it's snowing and it's freezing and you have to be there with your camera. So I struggle a lot because I, I have to be standing there for like two, three hours, sometimes four hours, freezing. But I mean, it's part of the job, so might as well get used to it now. No matter who wins that one. Just underway, second half. The Islanders will have control. Baker again leading the CMU. Still a time in the first half. It's 1 0. It is invaluable experience of what you're getting when you shoot a game whether it be football whether it be soccer whether it be volleyball basketball that is invaluable and for you can't get enough of that the more games you can work the better off you're going to be when you go out in the real world and when you do a good job of that people are going to notice people will notice they know that you can do the work you're going to get good recommendations so what you're what you're doing with a video here and the students do a video here is invaluable you can't get that kind of experience you can't buy that kind of experience sometimes you do both games like women's and men's team and then you have to be there like six to seven hours maybe standing there uh, controlling the camera but i think the the final product is like really cool because the people is seeing uh all the work that you're doing and that's the thing that i say like sometimes you wouldn't get uh, as much as much recognition as i would say we deserve because they're only seeing, like watching one thing, but not what is happening behind all of that, you know? They're not seeing how the cameras are being, like, uh, directed by, of course, the director. They don't see how the switcher is going, the guy with the graphics, and all the stuff that make the live stream. But I think it's really cool that we are able to uh, practice here in the school, and that is also helping to the school. Because parents in other countries, or in other cities in the United States, they can see their, like their sons playing, you know, the sports they're practicing here. I know a lot of people, a lot of sports teams have a lot of international students, so like we have that live stream is very important to a lot of these kids because it's simple fact there's certain people that can't just fly in or drive in just to watch a game. This is giving them attention back to it. So it's like you see the importance of of what you're doing and you helping so many people, you know what I'm saying, feel some type of way. Happy, joy, like, you know what I'm saying, or even sadness, because people lose on these on these live streams too, so. That's fine, I've got all of them. I've got those in case um, We'll use the, because uh, that camera's out, we'll use the. Uh, I'm charging the battery on it, so. I don't have batteries, that guy's sick, these batteries. 
And it's less for us as mass communication or a broadcasting division is that coaches and parents love to see uh, little Johnny or little Jenny play in the games. Um, and so parents have a value for it. The coaches use it to recruit because we, you know, we'll do, you know, we'll do every home football game. We'll do four, um, at a minimum, four home soccer matches for both the men and the women. We do four, at a minimum, home volleyball matches for both the men and the women. We cover wrestling events when they're here. Uh, we do, we'll do four or five lacrosse matches depending upon how their schedules fall uh, for both the men and the women. So we do a lot of sports. And in terms of um, the Missouri Valley College brand, that's instrumental. In terms of each coach using that as a recruiting tool to help get recruits uh, from places that may be more than a couple hours away so parents can't always see them, mm -hmm. uh, if you can't make it, watch the stream. Mm -hmm. and, and that's beneficial as well. It, it's live and I mean like, I don't know the sport, so for example, football. <laughs> football, American football. The director goes, okay, you need, your shot needs to be as tight as um, the line or all six men on the line or the outside tackles. What? I don't know what the outside tackles, like, you know, like you, and I mean, it forces you to learn more stuff and, and broadcast and mass communication. You have to know a little bit of everything, literally. And you, you don't realize it until people start talking to you about stuff like to shoot the Outside, make sure you get everybody in the outside tackles. You want to make sure this camera, make sure you guys are getting uh, the snap and the, and the quarterback focus on the quarterback. What if you don't know who the quarterback is? You know, like, I mean, I know that's probably the main person you should know. I don't know the safeties. I don't know that, you know, like, and it, it makes you, I don't know. That, that was the most nerve wracking, not knowing the terminology and what is expected of me. Um, and making sure that I don't mess up because it's live. It's live. I do a quick whip. Uh, one time I sneezed and the whole camera <laughs> went crazy. And the director's like, you're live. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I sneezed. And it's like, I don't know what to do. Like, you got a steady sneeze now? Like, you can't sneeze freely? Yeah, it's, that, it's just, it's always nerve wracking because you're live. You got the, uh, the, the first story. You got the first story. The the school is currently working out when fall break will be next year. And then your other story is the the women's soccer team. Okay, great. That's what I got. I just want to double check. With you. Hello and welcome to KMVC News. I'm Taylor Gilkey. Midterms are complete, the fall sports seasons are coming to an end, and the winter sports are on the brink of starting. And so, it is time for a break. KMVC's Bobby Collins reports on how Missouri Valley College has given students a break from their everyday college routine. Timing is everything, everything, and and you learn. You just, I don't know. You just learn how everything goes and how everything moves throughout the studio and how important communication is. That's one thing that I def definitely picked up on. Um, if they don't say cue or standby, or you know that that audio person doesn't tell you you're clear and you weren't clear, and the, the anchor starts talking and cussing and stuff, you're you're <laughs> like crap. It hears it. So I mean, it's. Communication is key. I love that we do this. This is definitely a great experience. Something I can use on my resume and show people that like I actually know what I'm doing and I've done it before. 
whether it was on TV or not, I did did the work and I've done it, you know? Teamwork, I would say, is everything here because it's not only about yourself. Okay, you can do um, your role like very well, but if one of your coworkers is having a problem, then the, sh the show is not gonna be able to get done, you know? Cause, and I think it's all about trying to help each other, you know? We are students, so you find the cameraman and there is another camera next to me that doesn't know how to do something. Of course, if I know, I'll try to help him because we are all here trying to get something done. And then if someone of us like struggle, then it's gonna affect the whole, the whole team, you know? So teamwork is like really, really important in mass comm. Cause as I said, it, it, we are all dependent on everyone, you know? It's not only about one thing. And so the goal is that by the time you hit that senior year of school and the bulk of the students are, you know, their end goal is to graduate and go do TV work. That's why the structure is kind of set up like that. Uh, by the time you get your senior year, um, you, one, you look like you're 22 instead of 18. You sound much more adult than you did when you were coming into, into college. Uh, and again, it's the, the taking it a little more seriously. So the expectation is that, and I lay it out in the very beginning, you know, we do 10 new shows during the course of the fall semester and six or seven during the spring. That's 17 chances to produce content that will get you a job. That's not a whole lot, honestly, uh, because not every pack, not every story you do is going to be perfect. So it's a matter of then giving it your best effort each and every time. That's kind of the expectation for me is that by the time that you're a senior, you're hunting for a job and you know that graduation is knocking on the door. So in terms of the expectation, it's, it's and I, I do it for all my classes, it's do your best. I mean, just give me what you can do and then take the uh, critiques that I give back, whether it's in the classroom or whether it's uh, you know, part of, of the written feedback on the scripts, make the corrections and, you know, the things you did well, do them better. Mm -hmm. The things you did in, not so well, fix. Uh, and then you should be able to see your performance ratchet up each and every week so that by the time you're, uh, you're hitting May of your senior year, uh, you may not have 17 pieces from which to choose, but you may have 10. Uh, and you can pick the cut, you know, best two or three to put on your on your website, and say this is what I can do. Mm -hmm. I remember when I first used to watch like the KNVC news reports, and I was like, I used to be, especially as an under, like super undergrad, like freshman sophomore year. I was like, man, I want to do the TV show. Like, when they gonna let me do the TV show? Then we get to the TV show. I'm like, okay, there's a lot thrown at me, but at the same time, uh, it's a bunch. It's a it's a class. We all learning together. So it's like that vibe, as long as the gel, if we are gelling, it's easier, it's way easier on each other. But it's very informational and it gives, it's a lot of hands on and it's a lot of throw you to the water. It's like, but again, like it feels like you get thrown into an ocean, told to swim, but it's a lifeboat. It's right up the road a little bit. And it's a bunch of y'all, so y'all are working together to get to the lifeboat if needed. But we can swim though, so we swimming.
oh my god, I have the worst experience. <laughs> the worst was the pancake festival, I think it was. Oh my god, that was the worst. Yeah, right, right. It's a, it's it's a mix of everything. Like so, when you stand in front of a camera, it's like, yeah. You sound like you know, before you get in front of the camera, you get your little script that you have to write, you have to read before you get in front of the camera. All that sounds good. I mean, you can read it, you can read it, you can memorize it, but it's like the task would always tell me, don't memorize anything, just, you know, get the key points and go off the key points. But see, like, I remember my experience when I went in there, oh man, I, I read straight off, I literally wrote exactly what I was going to say, and I couldn't say not a word. It was the hardest thing for me, I don't even know why, it's like I froze up the lights. The lights got on me, and it's like all I could do was smile. It's just big cheese, big cheese, and then I was just nervous. It went nervous, and he said three, two, one. He he rolled me in, and it was like he cued me in, and it was like, uh, damn, what am I supposed to say? What am I supposed to say? I think I messed it up, Chad. Start over, start over, start over. I mean, I, so when you, when you talk about that kind of broadcast, like okay, yeah, like you would say, it's a lot of different different aspects in broadcast. You stand in front of the camera, be behind the camera the director and all kinds of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that goes on with broadcast. A lot of people think it's easy, but I think it's because of stereotyping. Because, for example, in my country, uh, many of the people that doesn't know what they want to study, they'll just choose mass communication, or maybe the pretty girls will choose mass comm because they see them like being uh, anchors or something on TV, or maybe just uh, as a radio show. So I think a lot of people think it's easy, but because also uh, TV and radio and newspaper, they only show like a final um, product, right? Because they don't see what goes on behind the scenes. They don't see the hours that people put in in order to make a story come to life. They don't see people working as hard to get those interviews, to get this perfect edit so I can get this shot just right. This is not something that's easy. People, the only thing everybody sees is what's aired. They don't know the background that goes behind it. They don't know the hours that were spent on that story. They don't know how long they've been working on that. Somebody could have been working on that story for two weeks for a 30 second boop in the, <laughs> in the news show. And they're like, you know, like, oh, I could be an anchor. All you do is read the teleprompter. No. First of all, you don't read the teleprompter, you speak the teleprompter. So it doesn't seem like you're reading the teleprompter. Half the people don't even realize there's a teleprompter there. Those are the, and, the, and for those people that can do that, they're, they're the excellent ones. They're the, the great anchors that just make things flow. But the entire time, there's a teleprompter there. You got to learn how to read. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of people still struggle with reading aloud. If the teleprompter's broke, then what? You're improvising? Kind of. You still want to make sure you say the right because you don't want to butcher somebody else's stuff. You know, and it's, I mean, a lot of um, anchors today are also reporters. Um, they're also... The videographers, they are also, you know, like they, they do everything. And so you, on, a lot of people only see the finished product, but they don't see the hard work behind it. And for the most part, the pay is not the greatest. You're not going to get real rich unless you get to the top, which hopefully that's what will happen to you. But a lot of hours, the pay is not real good. You, you're going to go cover stories and you're going to upset some people. Some people aren't going to like what you report. But as long as it's the truth, that's fine. Uh, but, and family life. Sometimes family life kind of struggles because you're gone a lot. You're gone on weekends. You're gone for birthdays. You're gone on holidays sometime. And, and so you have to have a partner that really appreciates and understands that too. It's hard work. There's no question about it. If you, think, if you think you do a project and you think it's okay, you probably want to do it again because it's not as good. When you walk out of the editing room or you walk out of the radio production room, you should know that the product you put together is the best that you can do. And if you do that, you're going to be fine. If it's not, do it over. Because again, there's a lot of competition out there. The more work you can do in radio and in television, the more hours you can spend and doing it right, better chance you're gonna get a job when you get out of here. Something that I, I still struggle with, I'm shy. And sometimes it takes me like, should I talk to the person, how, when and everything. So don't do that. Like uh, being shy, it's, it's good and bad, but Try not to be shy when you're working in this field because you need to talk to people. Like you need to grab people on the streets and say, hey, can you want to do this? And sometimes I struggle with that. But if you 
if you can like just communicate, which is mass com, you know, so you're going to be good. You're going to do good. So just don't be shy and do do it. You need to know as a mass com, you need to know everything. You can't just know one part. Like you can't just know how to work a camera. Like that's not sure. Maybe you can like do this for one class, just know how to work a camera. But in real life, you're not gonna be like, oh, I know how to work a camera, so I can definitely get a job. No, you need to know how to be the director, the technical director, be able to edit, be able to anchor, be able to adjust and do over the shoulder shots. Like there's just so much that goes into it that people don't realize. And I wish that people maybe would just, if they just came in and to see KMVC just being on like, put on air, I don't think, I think they would be so confused and they would be shocked at how much goes into it. I feel like, um, I don't, I wouldn't fit in in any other career if I, had chose, chosen otherwise, you know what I'm saying? Um, I've thought about it and I've, every single time I think of any other possible major I could have picked, I don't see myself liking it the way I like and doing it with the pleasure that I do, like what I do in the mass comm. It, it feel good, it feel good to use that, it looks good. So it's like, I don't know, mass comm, I think mass comm is a perfect, it's just, now, to me personally, I would tell anybody to come to Mass Comm. Since I'm here, I haven't thought about changing my major. Maybe complementing with some other major that would help me. But I think I'm really happy with my choice. Like, I wouldn't see myself doing something else than this. I would miss the program more than anything and the people. Because that's one thing, um, being in journalism is just you get to meet people. And I met so, so many great people here. Uh, including yourself and it's like you see people come and go and then you just be like at the same time it helps inspire you you know uh, especially with like the documentary class and uh, st you start off with basic writing classes and then you see yourself putting these packages together and next thing you know you're putting a documentary together and then you're looking back at your portfolio and be like dang I didn't know I did all this within the time frame I'm hearing but at the same time you're like okay well Let's go see what these other aspects of the world got. You know, let's go find some more stories. Let's go do this over here. And it's bitter, bittersweet. Like, it's just like birds leaving a nest. But you, you know, you go always come back to the nest eventually one day, you know? I think all the hard work, all the extra work you do, all the time you put in, I definitely think it's worth it because whenever I finish my story and turn it in, I'm just like, I cannot believe I did that. I feel so happy and like I said, it's just so much that you put in, so much of your effort. Well, I don't regret it at all and it's crazy because um, initially my first semester, um, my first semester ever, freshman year, first semester I went to Tennessee State University. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go there, mass comm, be a broadcast major, that's where Oprah went, woo! You know, so like this can only be good. I hated it because I was so far away from home and I just didn't feel that family environment, you know, and I, I just couldn't, couldn't get into it. So I left and came here the second semester. And um, second semester, my freshman year, I lived off campus and I hated that too. Cause once again, I wasn't getting that family oriented thing, but I knew this program was like where I wanted to be. I knew this program is where I would learn a lot about myself, about the field, where I could ask a lot of questions, get hands on, um, talk to different people and get their perspectives on things. Um, my teachers would be honest with me. Like, do you think I'm good at anchoring? If I, they said no, uh, no, that meant no. Like they wouldn't, they would never sugarcoat anything. And that's one thing I love about the mass communication department, period, the whole department is, like they they don't sugarcoat <laughs> nothing they will tell you straight up everything and um that's the best part i have no regrets coming here i'm glad that i'm graduating from here um i can't wait to tell people this is where i went and 
I hope to be the person or one of the many people that puts Missouri Valley on the map? Um, well, being a woman in a field that is mainly for men, I would say, and especially I love sports. And sports, you, you see like 80%. Now it's different, okay? But he, being women in any, anything right, right now is fighting for something, like more than anything else. So it's a bit of a struggle, I have to tell you that. But I do not regret because I, I love what I do. Like, I know I'm doing something that uh, I like to do. Um, I still am in the field. And you know, I've I've done some really cool things uh, over the course of, of my broadcasting life. Uh, you know, it's been uh, three World Series, um, several Stanley Cup uh, playoff runs, uh, playoff football. Um, you know, there's been an expansion team or two here and there. Um, there's in college basketball, NCAA games. There's just you do a lot of really cool things uh, that have been part of it. Now it's a lot of hours. Mm -hmm. All right, like when I do live sports, I go work a Cardinals baseball game. You know, the first pitch is at seven. Odds are good I'm there at eleven in the morning uh, to to start setting up for the game. You have the eight hours of all that work goes into before the game, and then you broadcast the game. So, I mean, it's, yeah, those days are they're long, long days, and they require a lot of effort. But uh, I have not worked a day in my life regarding broadcasting. So it's really sad to say goodbye, but at the end of the day, I know that when I'm out there, they're going to be really proud, and I'll give them credit for it. I'll be like my professors at college helped me to be where I'm right now. So you're so, yeah, I'll miss the live streams, I'll miss the cold, I'll miss Maddie kind of yelling, not yelling, but just being mad at the head foot, at the headset sometimes, not all the time though. Um, I don't know, I'll miss posts, sometimes get frustrated because we don't hand things when we're supposed to and he's really flexible with that, but sometimes he will get really frustrated. I will miss Ken telling me, like, you can do this, just push through it. I know you're capable of doing this. And, yeah, I'll just miss that. So even if it was hard, and you are proud and you feel good about all these four years? Yeah, it was hard, but I'll do it all over again. I really liked it. I met some awesome people. I had awesome professors. I'm taking friends for life out of this career that maybe I wouldn't meet them if it was not because of this career. So yeah, we'll miss everything, but I'm really proud of what I've done. And I'll, like I said before, I'll do it all over again. I'll go back to 2014 and start all over. And yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs>
Oh no, I don't regret it. No way, no way. Are you recording me? Yeah. Oh. God. For the bloopers. It's your boy Ben and Jones in the camera. You see him live and well. This is him. Uh, book your photo shoot. He does photo shoots right now for college students for the twenty five. Price is going up. We price is going up. So you better get him in now mm. because you better get him while he's young and less experienced. I already got my photo shoot booked. Cut. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs>